Hydraulics have become a staple in machinery and heavy work as it makes it easier as well as more precise than purely mechanical means. Hydraulics is the practice of transferring force through a liquid and is most commonly done through a pump of some kind. And since liquids can't be compressed as much as pneumatics, for example, making it almost incompressible, it makes the force transfer very efficient and versatile. The first patent of a hydraulic press was recognized all the way back in 1795 by a man called Joseph Bremer in England. To understand how a hydraulic system may work, we are going to take a look at a simple mechanism. First, we will need a rod that is inserted into a cylinder housing. The rod has a fixed piston attached to O-rings that seal the gap between the piston and the cylinder housing to prevent leakage to either side. The purpose of the piston is to block liquid from passing to the other side. However, when we apply a force on the piston, it will be pushed since the rod isn't fixed and will be pushed out or in, depending on where the force is applied. In this animation, the red signifies a high pressure or a greater force on one side of the piston. And with this difference in pressure, an imbalance is created and will seek to equalize and we get a pushing force on our piston and in turn, our rod. However, it is not as simple as just putting pressure on one side if the other side does not have a relief. As we mentioned, liquid is mostly incompressible. If we were to try to push on an open system, or with a closed relief valve, something is going to break, most likely the component weakest to pressure. To solve this, a relief valve is installed that lets liquid seep out of the cylinder to allow the piston to move. This relief can also double as a secondary pressure side, allowing us to now apply a high pressure to both sides, extending and retracting the rod at will. Let's move away from the cylinder for now and take a look at the source of the pressure, the pump, oil tank and the engine. The oil tank is where the fluid is stored for pressure and relief. The pump pumps the liquid into the cylinder and creates the high pressure. The engine powers the pump through some fuel. We can see that the pressure from the pumps changes the direction of flow. However, there is a problem with this design. A conventional pump such as a vane pump or a gear pump cannot move in reverse. Which means we cannot change the flow of the liquid. So the pump is either working in one way or not at all. We can solve this by always applying pressure to both sides of the piston. But we add another component. Two valves that act as a relief and are connected to the oil tank. This is called a relief valve. And now we can control the rod by opening valves that create a lower pressure on one side, signified in blue, by sending the fluid back to the oil tank instead. Just remember that we only open one valve at a time, otherwise we won't get a difference in pressure that creates the force on the piston. This is a basic hydraulic piston system. This simplified version is not used in its current state, but we will go over a more realistic version that uses the same principles that we have already talked about up until this point. A more practical mechanism would be a control valve and channels. Here we have four openings, one input where we pump our high pressure liquid into and three outputs where we can give that high pressure fluid to. Now we can control this easily with a simple lever. The spool is there to block flow from the outputs we do not want to pressurize. This particular spool has a cavity path inside of it for this design. However, there are plenty of other spools without a cavity path. The spool can slide left to right and right to left, as it is connected to the lever. When the lever is in neutral position, the liquid will pump from the input to the third output. This output will be connected to the oil tank directly, making it pump to itself. This is because the pump is always working and cannot stop. Therefore, if we just plug the flow, it will build up pressure until something breaks. In this case, probably the pump. So we let the fluid flow, no matter the lever's position. Now let's push the lever to the right, causing the spool to pull left. Now we've opened the input to the output 2, the extending side. 
and block the path to output 3. As we pull the lever to the left, the spool pushes to the right and now the input is connected to the output 1 only, the retracting side. As we switch to the extending output, we can see that it is connected to the cylinder at the bottom. As the rod extends, we can see that through the retracting output, the fluid will get sent back to the oil tank, acting as the relief when extending. If you remember, this was the issue with a simple mechanism, that we needed an extra relief valve to let fluid escape from the cylinder, and now with this version, we can utilize both tubes for pressure and relief. We have one last component we need for this mechanism, an overweight safety valve. If you want to push something that is heavier than the, what the pump can manage, a buildup of pressure will occur, as the piston will not move and the pump will keep pumping as much as it can until it breaks. To make it safe for the operator and the machine, we will add another component that we will call the overweight relief check valve. It is connected to the main line right after the pump and will open when a high enough pressure is achieved and then sends it back to the oil tank. The valve itself is just a spring that holds a blockage towards the main line. And the spring can be overcome and let fluid pass until the pressure drops and the spring extends to block the passage again. Thank you for watching, and if you found this video informative, remember to put your washed laundry into the dryer. Soaked clothes will wrinkle.